Well, welcome to our series that we're calling Back To, Back To the Main Tap Roots of Our Lives, Back To School, Back To Work, Back To Church, and Back Home. And if you remember this time last year, what we were doing, we were having our membership drive, and we were renewing our vows to our spiritual family. And we are going to do that in the sermon on Back To Church. Renew our vows. Remember our deep connection to this work, to this unity of Muskegon family. It's a beautiful thing. And, and um, as I said in our uh, email, did anybody read the email that said, Good. It said, it said uh, work is just a four-letter word. Which remi- I got that, you know, from the old Bob Dylan song, love is just a four-letter word. Seems like only yesterday I left my mind behind down at the Gypsy Cafe with a friend of a friend of mine. <laughs> and he ends up saying, there is nothing more absurd than that love is just a four-letter word. Don't you love that song? Got to listen to that song. Okay. Well, work, work. Okay, back, back to work. Who knew that in this time of COVID, we were going to be looking at our jobs as distant points in the vanishing sunset? some of us, you know, that jobs just seem to be so (sighs) ephemeral. But with faith, with our eye on God, we can transcend these days. So just think with me now about going back to work. When you make your transition, you know, and you go over to the other side, I'm talking about when you make your transition to the afterlife I'm talking about. Do you think that you'll remember how much you earned per hour for your labor? Do you think that you will distinguish between what you did for money and what you just did? I don't know, but it's a good question, isn't it? It sort of puts things in perspective because what you do in life is not necessarily what you're paid to do or what job you're assigned or what title you earn in some career. It's your actual walk in life. I notice two different relationships of people to work, two types of relationships people have to work. Those who are totally bored without a job. When we were at the Shipshawana uh, flea market, there was this man who said, well, I retired three years ago and I was bored out of my mind, so I had to start a new business. I'm going, really? I, <laughs> I've, I've been, I remember when I was a stay-at-home mom and I got, I had, my husband and I broke up and I had to get a job. It was the last thing I wanted to do. Yeah, so there's, whole different ways of relating to this work-a-day world. Our relationship to work is very individual, very unique to each person. But what is universal, you see, what is common to all humans is that we want to feel that we have something to give that matters. Would you agree? We want to feel that we have something to give that is worth something. And therein lies the rub, because how does one go about positioning oneself so that one has access to contributing to the collective? One has access to contributing to the common good, to the community. And how does one go about having access to work that expresses one's individual gifts and one's aspirations and one's ideals. All of these considerations are at stake when we talk about going back to work or or going to work 
or finding what the Buddhists call, you know what they call it? Our dharma, or our walk in life, our archetypal journey, our self-expression. And I want to say right here that um, when children, when young people get to be about 13, there's a real need there for them to be enabled to make a contribution to the household, to the family. You know, for them to be able to do something useful that contributes to the whole household lifestyle. Because without that, you know, they've reached a stage in their identity development where they need to feel that they matter, that they have um, a contribution, a worth to a circle beyond themselves. And when they don't have that, it can be at the beginning of depression. So we want to be proactive about that and get out ahead and enable young people when they start to get into their teens to have the skills and the competence to do something that matters to the family and to other people. Now here is a shortcut at arriving to that place of working with satisfaction. What we were just talking about, your dharma, your walk in life. And here is a, a shortcut to arriving at that place to work with integrity and with self-expression and with satisfaction. Are you ready? Do everything with love. Do everything with love. Now that doesn't mean always be a sap. <laughs> Because it's not loving to enable people to continue to be codependent or enable people to continue to be addicted or enable people to continue to be weak. That's not loving. It's not loving not to hold your boundary and not enable people to take advantage of you and not to give more than is integrity for you to give. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean always be nice, always say yes, all that stuff. It does not mean that. But what it does mean is to keep your energies uplifted, to keep your vision to the Christ, to keep your heart open, and to keep your mind stayed on God. I want to read you the words of the, the hymn in our hymnal, number 341. It's a children's song. And I know the words by heart. You don't have to open the hymnal because we're, we're really not touching hymnals. We're not getting our germs on them, right? You know, so I'm just gonna say that to you, but it's, it's number 341 and it goes, it says written to, to uh, Myrtle Fillmore, whoever wrote the hymn, wrote it to Myrtle Fillmore, one of our co-founders. It goes, love is gentle, love is sweet. Love has willing hands and feet. Love your work and love your play. Love the Lord of every day. Love the birds and love the flowers. Love the fresh, sweet morning hours. Always love to do your part. Then you'll have a happy heart. Isn't that a wonderful song for children to sing? You'll have a happy heart by loving to do your part. Do everything with love. My children used to love that song. Now, do everything with love. Mop with love. Keyboard with love. Create with love. Chat with love. Rest with love. Punch in on your time cord with love. Punch out with love. Work with love serve with love. I had thought that this was going to be a sermon about social justice and about international productivity. And, but this is where it starts, you see. We cannot align with the productivity of people everywhere unless we are productive with an intention of love. That is, of the betterment of the improvement of others 
from the fruits of our labor. I've been greatly encouraged lately to notice that conditions seem to be conspiring in the world to mandate that our efforts must be in cooperation with the needs of people and environments to stay clean, to be wholesome, to be unharmed. That's what happens when you do everything with love. So I ask you now to remember a time when you were doing something, a project, an assignment, a job of work, and you felt the excitement of loving to be doing it. It was extraordinary to you. It was, it was special to you. If you have no such experience to recollect, then imagine one. Imagine a situation where you are absolutely thrilled and delighted to be doing it. Now, this <laughs> is how to walk your walk in life. And in this situation, there is no way you can fail because there's no way it can go wrong. You know the territory. You know your own heart. And you trust, totally trust, the intention that you are manifesting. And now such a walk creates a magnetism that draws what is needed. It creates a synergy that generates order and safety, safety. It's not plagued by accidents and shortfalls and not enough things here, and money not coming. It doesn't have that because it's uplifted. When you walk this walk, the magnetism is created to draw everything in divine order. And the synergy is created for events to unfold in safety and security and abundance. May the church say amen. amen. Now this is what Jesus meant when he said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added unto you. So yes, do everything with love. Do everything with love. And so now remaining in this feeling of peace and serenity and beauty, the beauty of this sanctuary, the shape of the windows, the colors, the comfort, the atmosphere over many decades of being together here. Our instruments, our piano, our organ, our musicians, artistically masterful, our people connected, willing to serve, generous, happy, gracious. In this atmosphere, we immerse ourselves in this energy of blessing this dynamic flow of spiritual inspiration and growth that catapults us along our journey to live in that kingdom, to live in the consciousness of all good. And so breathing, and relaxing and trusting. We dedicate ourselves in this time to commune, to allow the revelation from on high to anoint us and quicken every level of our being 
that we may experience the wholeness, the healing, the knowing, the wisdom, the guidance. Whatever is needed is at hand. Our statement for meditation is, in all I do, I honor God. And let these words sink into the depths of your consciousness to expand so that every action that you take, every movement of your hand and foot, is in the awareness of love, is in the intention of honoring the highest vibration. of expressing the Christ in us. In all we do, we honor God. And we know this in the silence. For there is only one presence and one power. God the good, omnipotent. And so it is. Amen.